Did you know that recruiters only spend an average of six seconds looking at your resume? How then can you make your resume stand out from the crowd? Stick around to find out. Hi friends, my name is Jamie and I'm a Googler based in Singapore. On this channel, I'll be sharing useful recruitment and interviewing tips for students to get their first internship or job. In this video, I'm going to share some pointers on how you can get your resume to stand out from others. As I'm currently editing, I realized I forgot to mention that timestamps will be left here. So feel free to skip ahead to whichever parts you feel may be relevant to you. Most students want to get an internship or job right out of tertiary education. This is to gain exposure and experience within a company of their choice because it gives them a chance to truly experience what it's like working in the real world. The real hidden reason is that if students do well in the internship, there will be a chance for conversion to a full-time role. So there is the element of job security and securing a good future at the company. I was no different. With my background in law, I set out to look for honestly any law internship that would take me in and I eventually found my way through to secure two internships. However, I was not really able to get those internships through my brilliant application. Instead, I got very lucky as my parents knew folks who knew folks in those fields. So, well, that's a story for another day. But in today's job market, the reason students aren't able to secure internships is because number one, competition is incredibly high. Number two, firms or recruiters only want to hire the best students. So students who have maybe the perfect GPA. I was certainly not one of them. And number three, students are not able to properly highlight their achievements in their resume. So how can you actually stand out from the rest? Number one, tailoring your resume to each job description. This is quite important and can often be very overlooked. For example, requirements for a software engineering internship will very much differ from a business internship. Heck, even if you're focusing on the tech world, there are so many different types of positions like UI, UX, front-end technologies, full-stack technologies, the embedded space. And same for a business internship. Are you looking for a sales, marketing, or business development role? So ask yourself those questions. And you know, this really could differ from company to company, right? So always be sure to read the job description carefully and tailor your resume accordingly to the job. I've made the mistake of actually just throwing a couple of resumes out to every single company I knew of that was hiring. And well, I didn't get any response because I didn't bother to put in the effort to try to figure out, you know, what the company really wanted. So don't make that mistake. Think about tailor-made clothes. If you just buy clothes that look great but simply don't fit you, it's not going to look flattering on you no matter what you do. If you make the effort to look for and buy clothes that fit your body shape or type, it's going to look great on you even if it's not expensive and whatnot. And if you go to make the effort to tailor and custom fit your clothes, you know it'll be the ultimate perfect fit. It's the same thing with the resume and the job you are looking for. Number two, ensuring that your resume is easy to read. Making sure things like typos are non-existent, using fonts that are readable and not too small, and formatting is neat and very aligned. Make sure the length of your resume does not surpass one page. And yes, it's really doable. It just takes a lot of summary skills and awesome formatting skills. To check for mistakes, try reading your resume from the bottom towards the top. Remember, recruiters only spend an average of six seconds looking through each resume, so don't make it harder for them to read through it. One quick way is to get a recruiter or a friend to proofread your resume and share their thoughts and comments. Before I joined Google, I came across this article written by Laszlo Bock, the former Google Senior Vice President of People Operations. Pfft, it's a mouthful. It's called My Personal Formula for a Winning Resume by Leslie Bock. I'll link it here somewhere. And it was written in September 2014, but it's still completely relevant. I still recommend this article to every student I chat with today. And sometimes even I refer back to it when I'm updating my own resume. So what is this secret magical formula? Let me share it with you. Every one of your accomplishments should pre be presented as such. Accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z. So in other words, start with an active verb, numerically measure what you accomplished, provide a baseline for comparison, and detail what you did to achieve your goal. So that sounds quite confusing, right? So here is an example that I took from my resume. So earn an average of $52,000 per month, bracket, top 5% contributor, which was 40% above the team average, which was you know, 37,000, by managing about 180 cases per month. You may think, meh, I'm just a student and there isn't any data point I can actually provide. Here are another two examples to showcase how you can improve your achievement by just a few small tweaks. Anyway, this, these examples are actually taken from Leslow's article. So I highly recommend you go and check out his article. And again, I have linked it in the card notes or I will link it in the description below as well. So Leslow manages to break it down in a way where he shows three examples, right? The first one being just meh. And the second one is a little bit better 
but the third one really highlights what this person has done. Uh, take this for example, right? This person is a university student participating in a leadership program. Um, they were a member of Management Leadership for Tomorrow, MLT. That's the first one. Second one, selected as one of 230 people for this 18-month professional developmental uh, program for high-achieving diverse talent. And the third one, which just tweaks a little bit, selected as one of 230 participants nationwide for this 18-month professional development program for high-achieving diverse talent based on leadership potential, ability to contribute to this MLT cohort, and academic success. Right? Think about it. Just, just small tweaks like that just make your resume look so good and it makes you sound so special, isn't it? So it's definitely an art. So keep trying to perfect it. When I was interning at one of the law firms, one of the lawyers I was attached to, was called Sherwin, was really kind enough to help me review my resume and make some tweaks to it. I finally understood what he meant by, your resume is too descriptive. You're basically writing out a job description and it doesn't showcase what you really did. Ever since I implemented the tip by Leslie into my resume, I've definitely felt that my resume packs a punch. It's concise yet powerful, and that's what each and every one of your resumes should be like. And once it gets picked up by any recruiter, I guarantee that they will be impressed and shortlist you for an initial phone interview. So try crafting a one-page resume. You'll never know until you try, and it's gonna be difficult. So start by listing out all of your achievements, and continue to refine from there. There really is no one-size-fits-all resume and depending on the job you look and apply for, it could look very different. And here's a standing offer for all of you. Send me your resume and I'm very happy to take a look at it to see how I can help you improve on it in terms of structure or I can even just help you do a quick proofread on it. After all, it really doesn't hurt to have a second pair of eyes on it. So if you found value from this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video.